Hi guys, today I want to talk about Nextcloud on Azure. Now, if you're not familiar with the concept of Nextcloud or the app itself, it's pretty straightforward. It's similar to what you might get from something like OneDrive or Dropbox. Now, Dropbox and, and OneDrive are certainly going to be very economical offerings. They're public offerings that you can sign up for, you can pay for a subscription, and they're going to give you some large amount of storage. I could go out to OneDrive today and sign up for a family plan. I would get six accounts and each one of those accounts comes with one terabyte of storage. So a total of six terabytes of storage. And at $99 a year, that's a pretty good deal. To do that same kind of thing in Azure to get six terabytes of storage, I would end up paying a lot more than that. So uh, again, that's a much better deal. But if privacy is a concern and you want to have the most secure private experience you can have, then not using something like OneDrive or Dropbox and spinning it up yourself and hosting it, uh, you have full control over the environment. Your data is private. It's using uh, encryption. And so nobody else other than you can see that data. Now with Azure, what you can do, unlike what you can do on-prem, is you can use more dynamic storage for the, the, the file storage itself. Now, Azure has two offerings that work well for this. You can use Azure Files, which is uh, basically a file share on Azure and uses the SMB protocol that you can then use for a mount on a VM. But you can also use blob storage. And more recently, Azure introduced NFS shares from blob storage that you can mount as part of the file system in a Linux context as well. So the reason that you would wanna use a blob storage in this case over Azure Files is because of the nature of the workload. Now with Azure Files, it's useful for all kinds of things, but it's optimized for transactional uh, style workload. So if I was running something like a database and I wanted to move the storage off of the VM into some kind of network share, I could use Azure file shares for that. And it's uh, going to be much more conducive to random reads and writes from the data that's stored on that file share. Now, blob storage isn't as conducive for that. Now you can do block level updates, but it's a lot harder. But what it is really useful for is replacing files and downloading files, which is exactly what you're going to be doing with like a file sharing service. So if I create a file on my PC, the client then is going to take that file and upload it into the server. And if it's using uh, storage on blob storage behind that, it's just going to overwrite what's already there. Or if I have another client that uploads to the same server and then my have the another client connected to the same account, it's just going to download it from the blob storage through Nextcloud. And so this gives me the ability to use blob storage as the back end for it, but I can then use Nextcloud to basically act as the service layer that will allow me to sync data back and forth between the cloud and my PC or my phone, whichever client I want to use. So this is a really nice solution that uses blob storage instead of file shares. It's also going to be a little bit cheaper because blob storage tends to be a lot cheaper than Azure file shares because it doesn't require that random read and write like file shares do. And so it's going to basically cost about 50 to 40% less than what you would pay for on a per gigabyte basis on an Azure files versus using something like blob storage. So what I want to do is walk you through the architecture of this first, and then we'll go show you how to set it up. I basically automated the whole thing. So it's pretty simple. And then I'm going to set up a client to log into that particular instance of Nextcloud. And then that will allow me to sync files back and forth between Nextcloud and the client PC. So let's just walk through the architecture, it's very straightforward. And then we'll go look at the automation and then do the demo for uh, setting up the client. So this is the architecture, it's pretty straightforward. You have a client PC, this could be a Mac or Windows or a Linux box, any one of those will work. You can also use a phone, you can use iOS or Android. There's uh, mobile apps for this as well. And those are gonna sync with the cloud. So you have the, the PC here, uh, that's going to have the client app and it's going to talk to the next cloud server, which is going to be on an Azure VM. Now I used a pretty modest VM for my setup. And of course you can scale that up if you want to, but the Azure VM is going to have the, the next cloud server installed. And that's just a Linux VM using Ubuntu. I've automated it using Ubuntu, but of course you can roll this if, yourself if you want to, but the automation I wrote uses Ubuntu and then it uses Apache and then MariaDB and then it installs Nextcloud on top of that stack. So it's just a, a LAMP stack. So very straightforward there. And once that's up and running, then it connects to NFS uh, on blob storage behind the scenes. So NFS is the network file share on blob storage. It's, it's a protocol level implementation of it. So basically 
when the automation starts, it creates the storage account and then it gets the endpoint and then passes that into an automation script that runs on this whenever the machine is created. And then that does all the automation for creating everything as well as using Let's Encrypt to install it. And so once that's installed, you have a private endpoint to this backend here. So this is not publicly exposed. And then you also have the publicly exposed VM. This is where the application sits. So this is all on a, on a private back channel between NFS and blob storage, and this is publicly exposed to a public IP address, but it's all over HTTPS. So very basic architecture, but still it gets the job done and it's pretty performant. And it's also pretty economical considering the solution. Certainly not as economical, as I said, as something like OneDrive, if you were to sign up for that, but certainly something that you might want to consider if you're uh, concerned about privacy or something like that. So here's the repo for this little project here. It's uh, pretty straightforward. So basically you have a couple of files here. The two important files for this are of course the readme, that's all important, but you have this shell script, which actually runs on the VM once created. And then this is the template that is used by Azure. So the template is just an ARM template and it deploys all the resources. So we've gone over those already. Um, so it deploys that and then it calls this by way of a VM shell extension. So the VM shell extension uh, basically just installs all the stuff that you need to run Nextcloud and then mounts the storage as part of the VM's file system. So this is pretty straightforward. There's the, the app get to install a dependency. So this is using LAMP stack. So it's using Linux, of course, and using PHP, Apache, and MariaDB. Uh, to run the application. It generates a password and then sets up the database. And then from there, it uses the, the NFS mount as part of the file system. And then it makes this a part of NF, uh, the FS tab file so that it, it it's there every time the machine reboots. This is where it downloads uh, Nextcloud. This installs Nextcloud just using the CLI utility uh, for Nextcloud. It uses the admin password and username that you passed in uh, from the, the form. And then of course the generated DB password down here and then that connects Nextcloud to the database and then uses those uh, credentials. This just sets some permissions though that Apache can talk to Nextcloud. This is a baseline configuration for Nextcloud right here using port 80. This is needed so that whenever you call this right here, it's gonna base th the HTTPS configuration off of this one right here. So it's basically going to use CertBot to run this particular um, request. And then CertBot's gonna go grab an SSL certificate. It's gonna generate a CSR, go to Let's Encrypt, grab the certificate, download it, install it on Apache. And that way you have SSL for your instance of Nextcloud. And then of course, it's going to use a cron job to refresh that, temp that certificate uh, too. And so it sets that all up on the VM for you. So very useful utility there. And once it's done, it restarts everything and everything's good to go. So deploying this is pretty straightforward. Um, we'll get to this VM in a minute, but uh, this um, is pretty straightforward right here. Uh, you can deploy it using whatever utility you want to deploy an ARM template. But if you just want to deploy it through the Azure portal, click on this button here, deploy to Azure. And this is just going to use a custom template um, deployment. And so you fill out the form and you click go and it just does its thing without having to use any CLI utilities or anything else. So let me create a, a, um, a resource group here. Um, I think I already have one right here. Um, test next cloud. I'm going to use this one. I'm going to use a, a username, blaze, password. I'm going to type that in. I would give it my email address for the uh, SSL certificate. That's what Dex, uh, next cloud is going to use. Sorry, not next cloud with let's encrypt. And let's give it a name. Let's call it blaze next cloud one, two, three, or something like that. And that's going to be in central us.cloudapp.azure.com. That will be the host name for my instance of next cloud. Now you could use a custom domain with this. I didn't automate it, but you could come back later and assign a custom domain to this. You'd have to modify the config file on the VM to allow for that, but it's pretty straightforward. Uh, but it's going to default to this one. So that's why I use it with Let's Encrypt because it's using uh, the HTTP method to validate that, oh yeah, this is my VM, this is my host. And so I can get a certificate for this, even though it is an azure.com certificate is basically doing it at the, for the fully qualified domain name rather than using an azure.com SSL certificate. So let's go ahead and do that and deploy this guy and we'll come back when it's done. This usually takes five to 10 minutes to, to run. And once it's done, you'll be ready to go. Okay, the deployment completed. So let's go go to the resource group. Now to get the endpoint for this, I wanna come down here to the virtual machine and grab the uh, DNS name right here. So you can see it's blaze next cloud 123 central us cloud app.azure.com. I'm gonna copy that and then pop this up in a new 
uh, tab here, HTTPS colon slash slash, and then just put that in and you should get the endpoint for Nextcloud. Now the, the login is exactly uh, what we put into the form whenever we created the resource. And that will then take you to the home screen for Nextcloud. Now this is just a bare bones Nextcloud install. So there's really nothing uh, on this. So if you wanted to customize this experience, um, you could definitely do that because the user it sets up is just a admin user on Nextcloud. So you could add users, you could add this to Azure Active Directory uh, for like LDAP authentication. There's plugins for all kinds of things that you can do with this. I'm not gonna get into the details of Nextcloud, but the primary function of this, of course, is file sharing. And file sharing is what I'm gonna demonstrate using the, the app here, but it comes with a basic set of files that you can you know, sync up uh, right here just to demo this. So it has a MP4 file, PDF, just a, some different kinds of things here that you can use uh, for a basic set of files that will demonstrate syncing back and forth to um, Nextcloud. So I'm gonna basically set up a client and it's gonna download these files from this particular instance of Nextcloud, but I'm gonna be using the same endpoint that I use right here. So let's flip over to this VM right here. This is Nextcloud client. So I'm just going to uh, connect to this guy using RDP. And uh, let's go ahead and get an RDP session going on here, right here. You can download the RDP file. Let me uh, pop this open with RDP. And um, I'm gonna log into this guy using the credentials I supplied to it when I created it. I'm, I'm not gonna go through how to create a Windows VM on Azure, that's pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and get logged in here. And then we're just gonna download Nextcloud and install it. This is the first time I've logged into this VM, so it might take a minute. Okay, I'm logged on the VM now. Let's go ahead and launch this client right here. This is just a browser, of course. And let's go get Nextcloud and um, wait for this to load. And let's get Windows 10, which should be fine for this particular machine, even though it's Windows 11. And let's start the setup for this process. I'm gonna go ahead and click log in right here. And this is where I'm gonna put in the endpoint for my client, my server, which is the same as the server right here. Um, so I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna go back down here to my, my server. So HTTPS colon slash slash, and then put in the, the name of the endpoint and then click next. And it's going to take me over to the browser. Now this is going to ask me to log in. It's basically going to create a token um, for this guy. And uh, the token is going to be used by the client rather than storing the password. And so it's going to get a token. I'm going to grant access to this guy and um, it can close the window. And um, now you can see it's setting up a directory users blaze next cloud. I can use a different location. I can use virtual files instead of downloading them. Um, I want to synchronize the file so that uh, I can use them offline um, or you can choose what to sync. This allows you to pick the files too. You can pick folders. And this is just gonna basically download everything uh, locally. So I don't have to be online uh, to do that. So it's gonna start the file sync right here and that's gonna take a few minutes. But once I have that done, then I should have everything on my uh, folder here on my local client as well as what's in the cloud, it should match identical to that. Um, now, if you have files on your, your local machine, it will upload those. So it does basically a merger of what's there. It doesn't delete files. It just basically merges the two together. So it creates uh, a synced directory with whatever's in the Nextcloud folder and whatever's online. So let's go browse this on, on the machine. And that had decent performance. So you saw that it was uh, running pretty well, uh, considering that there's a fair, like, fairly modest VM on um, Azure. It's only a 1BS, but that would work for you know, a dozen or so users. I don't know that I'd use more than that. You can definitely scale the video, the, the VM up. Um, so if I look or poke around on this a little bit, uh, you can see that I have uh, that Nextcloud manual. There's that intro movie that it showed when I logged in. And these are the, the photo file, photos right here. And if I were to delete any of these, um, it would basically sync that change up to, to the cloud. So let's go ahead and just delete I don't know, a couple of these right here. And um, then it'll sync those changes up to Nextcloud. So um, I can minimize this. 
Um, come back over here to next cloud and let's go into this right here. And you only see that those three files. Um, so that was a pretty quick change. It's just basically monitoring that next cloud folder and any changes get reflected up here. So the proof's in the pudding, we want to see this on files on Azure files or rather Azure blob storage. So to do that, I'm going to come back over here to, um, my, a home directory here, and let's go back over here to the resource group I put this in and find the storage account, um, which is this right here. Now, if I try to browse this, it's not gonna let me browse this because uh, I don't have permissions because I set up the, the network uh, policy to block access to the storage account, even though I am the owner of the subscription, and that's because it's a network issue um, to, to change that, I come down, I can come down to the networking right here and, uh, add my endpoint to the, uh, the, the list of the white list here, and then, um, save that off. And that's just going to add this machine to, or rather my network here, uh, to the list of allowed networks to connect to this guy. And, um, then I should be able to browse into this. And now you can see that, this is the folder that Nextcloud writes. The actual data uh, file for data uh, is in this Blaze folder. You can see the files right here. And this is everything that we saw on Nextcloud. So this should look exactly like what we see on the, the parent directory um, right here. So the same file set right there uh, is on this particular instance of blob storage. And if I go into the file folders, we see the same three uh, you know, files here. So Again, you see the reflected changes on the blob storage account. So you can see that it's actually using the NFS protocol uh, behind the scenes to make modifications to this file uh, share right here. So everything is synced up with the client using Nextcloud to blob storage. And this is a fairly economical uh, use case because right now I'm only using 20 megabytes or so, and I'm using just a standard H, uh, HDD for this particular VM, and it's a modest VM, so I think it costs me about $7 a month to run this particular VM. Uh, and then the, the storage right now, because it's so little, is pennies, but if I was to even go up to a terabyte, it would probably cost me about 10 bucks uh, a month for the storage, even at a terabyte, which is better than files, but still not as cheap as something like OneDrive if you wanted to sign up for that. But this is completely private, so this is not shared with anybody It's encrypted. It's all controlled by me. Nobody has access to, to this other than me. And so this is very private, very secure way of managing files in the cloud. And it might be something that you want to do if security is a concern, but again, just deploy this if you want to use it, it's uh, available out there on GitHub, very easy to deploy to Azure. And of course you can modify it and scale it, do whatever you want to with it. Uh, it's a very scalable solution as well. So something to check out if you're interested in privacy on Azure. If you like this content, please consider subscribing to the channel by clicking on the subscribe button. You can also like this content by clicking on the thumbs up or share this content with your friends and also comment in the comment section down below. You can also find me online at www.blaze.net or on Twitter at The One Mule. And as always, thanks for watching.